Hey there, welcome back to Legend Finance, the stock market. It sounds complicated, right? But guess what? It's not as complex as it sounds. Think of it like this. The stock market is this huge global swap meet where folks trade pieces of companies. We call these shares. If the company you own shares and hits a home run, your shares go up in value and you could make some cash. On the flip side, if the company strikes out well, you might lose some. These share prices bob up and down all the time, a crazy dance of supply and demand. Stay tuned as we're about to break it all down and show you how to groove with the best of them on this exhilarating financial dance floor. What are stocks? Owning a stock or a share is like owning a tiny piece of a company. For instance, if you bought one of Amazon's 1,000 shares, you'd own 1,000th of it. But really, they've got millions of shares. Owning stock means you own a part of the company, and if the company does well, your stock's worth more. There are also common and preferred shares. Common shares mean you get a vote on stuff like board elections or mergers. Preferred shares don't give you that, but they do get first dibs when the company pays dividends, that's splitting profits with shareholders, and in other financial situations. Stocks can get tricky, but understanding these basics is a good start for anyone investing. Why do companies sell stocks? So you might be wondering, why do companies like Amazon or Tesla sell stocks? It's pretty straightforward, they need money. When they sell shares, they can rake in a ton of cash without doing any extra work. Now, the tricky part is that the stock market values these companies based on their future earnings, so even small startups can make millions or even billions if people think they're the next big thing. But where do these companies sell their stocks? That's where the stock market comes in. Companies sell shares through what we call an initial public offering or IPO on a stock exchange. This takes a company from being privately held to being publicly traded. IPOs can allow the founders to cash out or just let the company raise more funds. Once a company's stocks are out there on an exchange, we can all buy and sell them. Prices change based on what people think and how the company is doing. P to E ratios or price to earnings ratios and other metrics are typically used to measure this. We know that it might sound overwhelming, especially if you're new to investing, but trust us, it's not as scary as it sounds. How and why? Now we need to understand why a share price goes up and down. The stock market is like a massive pool of investors and traders, all with different opinions about a company. They all make their own decisions, and the sum of those decisions is what makes a stock's price go up or down. If more people buy, the price climbs. If more people sell, the price drops. Imagine you're selling something on Craigslist for $100. If you get a ton of emails from people wanting to buy, you might think your price is too low and raise it. On the other hand, if nobody bites, you might lower the price until someone's interested. That's pretty much how the stock market works, but instead of you consciously changing the price, millions of transactions every second do the job. This is all about supply and demand. For every stock bought or sold, there needs to be a buyer and a seller. If there are more buyers, the price goes up. If there are more sellers, the price goes down. Traders often talk about the bid-ask spread, which is the difference between what someone's willing to pay for a share, the bid, and what someone's willing to sell it for, the ask. At the end of the day, if more people want stock, it'll be more expensive. Automatic trading Back in the good old days, the process of connecting buyers and sellers in the stock market happened manually. Imagine people shouting and waving on a crowded trading floor, trying to strike a deal. But now, things have changed a lot. Advanced trading systems have mostly automated the process. These systems match buyers and sellers almost instantaneously, which really speeds things up. This high-speed, automated trading is what gives the stock market its fast-paced, almost frenzied vibe. Automation not only makes things faster, but also more efficient. It allows for millions of transactions to take place each day, far more than could be managed manually. Plus, it gives us real-time updates on share prices, so we always know what's happening with our stocks. So when you're watching the stock market, what you're really seeing is the result of these automated systems working behind the scenes, making countless trades every second. And that's why the market moves so fast. Why invest? So we might be asking ourselves, why go through all this trouble of understanding stocks and investing when we can simply keep our money in a bank and earn 2-3%? to 3%? 
Well, the answer is simple. With the right strategy, we can make a lot more money from investing. Take Amazon as an example. If we bought $1,000 worth of their stock back in 1997, we'd be looking at roughly $1.5 million today. Sure, that's a long-term investment, but most of us would agree it's worth the wait. And it's not just about these big hitters. There are plenty of companies that provide solid annual returns, somewhere around 30 to 70 percent. That kind of growth can significantly increase our wealth, far outstripping the 2 to 3 percent we get from a bank. So in essence, as long as we're earning more than 3 percent in the stock market, we're doing a better job with our money than just letting it sit in the bank. How to invest all right, now that we've got a good understanding of the stock market as a real-time marketplace where we can buy a slice of companies we believe in, what's next? The first step is setting up a trading account. There are lots of places where we can do this, from traditional providers like E-Trade or big banks to free trading apps like Robinhood. While some of these services charge fees for each trade, newer tech-based platforms like Robinhood let us trade without any fees, so we can invest all our money without worrying about those extra charges. Once we've got our trading account, the real challenge begins, deciding which companies to invest in. It's important to remember that stock prices can range from just a few cents to several thousand dollars. The thing with stocks is that we can't buy a fraction of one, it's all or nothing. If we're eyeing a big player like Amazon, we'd need at least $1,800 to get started, at least that was the price when this was written. But there are also many well-rated companies whose shares are much more affordable. Before we take the plunge and buy, we should do our homework. We need to understand how the company makes money, check out its financial health, and see what experts are saying about it. At the end of the day, investing always involves some risk, so it's crucial that we only invest money we can afford to live without, at least for a while or until a certain stock rebounds if it takes a hit. Conclusion We've just skimmed the surface of the stock market, understanding its workings and how we can get our feet wet. But there's so much more to it. We've got the deep dive into technical analysis, the whole dictionary of trading jargon, and even the high-stakes game of buying stocks on margin. That's when we trade with money that's not even ours. But hey, it's perfectly okay. We're just starting out. And the truth is, there's no need to know it all before we jump in. The stock market is like a real-world classroom. We learn as we go. The best way to get the hang of it is to start small. We should pick an amount we're okay with losing and take that first step. Now this isn't about throwing our money away, far from it. We're investing it, learning the ropes, and getting our hands dirty. We shouldn't rush though. We should take the time to understand what we're doing and research the companies we're interested in. There's a whole range of resources out there to help us. Financial news websites, market reports, investment podcasts, you name it. As we go along, we'll start getting a feel for the market, understanding trends, and making more confident decisions. And it's vital to remember that we should only invest what we can afford to lose, especially in the early days when we're still learning. Slowly but surely, we'll get better at this. We'll understand the market's language, we'll spot opportunities, and hopefully, we'll see our investments grow. But it takes patience and time. And with a bit of persistence, we can navigate this complex world of stocks and hopefully build ourselves a nice little nest egg. And that, my friends, is the essence of the stock market, a captivating world of opportunities, risks, and thrilling financial journeys. Whether you're a hardened financial veteran or just taking your first steps into this realm, remember that it's about patience, continuous learning, and making those savvy decisions. Now, before we part ways, could you please click on that subscribe button and switch on those notifications? Doing so not only means you'll never miss out on any of our fantastic content, but it also supports us in crafting more of these engaging, inclusive videos designed for everyone in the world of finance. Thank you for spending your time with us today at Legend Finance. Always remember, in the journey of life and in the intricate dance of the markets, to stay curious, informed, and as always, stay legendary.